Hi, I'm Tim Gideon for PC Mag. Today we're looking at the iPad 2 available from Apple on March 11th. It comes with a charger and a sync cable, no earbuds, which is a little silly since it has a headphone jack and starts at $499. This is what it looks like compared to the old iPad, which is the thicker one on top that does not have the rounded edges. The same 30-pin connector and built-in speaker sit at the bottom of the back panel, and above the volume controls a new rotation lock or mute switch. You choose which you want it to control in the settings menu. Below the sleep-wake button, the new rear-facing camera, and next to it, the black rubber compartment that houses the 3G components on the Wi-Fi Plus 3G models for Verizon and AT&T. And next to that, the headphone jack. The 1024 by 768 pixel 9.7 inch screen remains unchanged. Below it, we have the home button, and up top, we have the new front-facing camera lens. The smart cover, which replaces the old iPad case, which was kind of bulky, is a great new accessory. It protects the screen attaching magnetically to the left panel and puts the device to sleep when it's closed. Opening it up wakes up the iPad too, and the smart covers come in polyurethane or leather, starting at $39. The smart cover also doubles as a stand for your iPad. Also $39 is the Apple Digital AV adapter, which allows for HDMI output via the iPad's 30-pin connector. You connect it to an HDMI port on your TV, and all of a sudden you see a mirror image of what's on your iPad, whether you're watching a movie, playing a video game, whatever. You'll see everything in 1080p except video, which will be in 720p, and it probably won't fill up your television screen. It'll default to a size that looks best. So let's check out the camera app. It shoots video in 720p, and tapping on the screen changes the aspect ratio of your view, but does not affect the actual recording. Video and photos you take can be accessed by clicking on the lower left corner icon. There's no flash, and the rear-facing camera shoots images below one megapixel. It's more toy than tool, but the camera can be a lot of fun, especially in some of the other apps. One inclusion everyone expected was FaceTime, Apple's video chat app. It's the main reason for the VGA quality front camera. Making and placing calls is easy, but there's no HD level video like there is on the new MacBooks. The app works much in the same way it does on the iPhone and iPod Touch, and it only works over Wi-Fi. The new iMovie app is $4.99 and also similar to the iPhone's iMovie app. It's easier to use though because it has more screen space, which makes editing a little easier. You can also add generic music or songs from your iTunes library or add sound effects. There's a variety of ways to share your final project, including posting it on YouTube or Facebook. And another camera app on the iPad 2 is Photo Booth. It's good, goofy fun, and some of the effects show off the faster graphics processing of the new A5 chip inside the iPad. GarageBand for the iPad is $4.99, and it's probably the best app I've seen from Apple. Uh, for songwriters, it's a memo pad for jotting down musical ideas on the go. And if you're not a musician, you can still fool around with the various smart instruments that are preloaded, and you can sound like one. I promise, it's not hard. When you're finished mixing, you can export your new masterpiece via email or put it into your iTunes library on the iPad. Of course, the iPad still has iBooks, an internal iPod for your music and videos, and now it has the three-axis gyroscope so you can play games that detect side-to-side -side and up-and-down movements, like Jenga. The Apple App Store is loaded with iPad apps and growing. It's really in a league of its own when we're talking about app marketplaces for mobile devices. The Safari Browser app has gotten a bit speedier with iOS 4.3, and some sites now come in full or mobile options when you load 